Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Slimtastic and welcome back to SCP Secret Files. Now I know it's been a hot minute since I've played this game and if you ended up coming to my channel and liking my content when I was playing this game consistently, you might be missing this game. Now I don't really want to sort of dive too much into this game because I mean there are two episodes that kind of explain what the whole premise of this game actually is so if you're really interested and want to know the full story I'd recommend going checking out those other episodes but until then uh, this is episode three I hope you all enjoy episode three and I'll talk to you all in the end. Oh nice there cinematic. There are many stories in this world. Some are read widely all over the world. Some are hidden in dust and known only by a handful of people. Today I'm going to tell you a story no one else has heard before. A real story of mystery and wonder and adventure. And then you too will become the guardian of this story. The story takes place in a world of long ago. The hero of our story is a little boy his name is Daniel. One day, out of nowhere, Daniel got a serious case of chicken pox. It made him look like a strawberry. To make sure he didn't spread it to others, Mrs. Page, the principal, had him isolate in an attic. And so, in the attic he lived all on his own. Mr. Daniel, while up here in this attic, you'll have plenty of time to practice your penny whistle. I hope you'll practice well and prepare for next month's art festival. But Mrs. Page, the melody is so difficult. Don't give up, boy. You don't give up before you fight. That boy's microphone sounds like it was like recorded in a bathroom or something like that, like a last minute recording or something like that, that he didn't get called into the studio for professional recording. There was so much like ambience and reverb behind it, so that's kind of surprising. Daniel was reluctant at first, but he trusted Mrs. Page and he knew he should listen. And so he practiced the penny whistle. Oh, great. This is going to be phenomenal. Ah, uh, you're f- Wait, as... Ah, oh, fuck. Miss that one. <laughs> Suddenly, he heard some strange noises in the corner of the attic. Huh? Who's there? Daniel decided to go over and take a look. Yeah, take a look at the sudden noises. Oh. <laughs> Nice art style, devs. Nice art style. Very cool. It was a mouse trap, and there was a red origami paper dragon inside of it. Daniel carefully removed it. It was marvelous and beautiful. The only problem was part of its wing was damaged. But Daniel found a way to repair it. Mm, great. Oh, Jesus. Choose items to repair the, the thing with. Um. Daniel held the repaired paper dragon high, high up in the air, imagining that it soared over all the world below. He played and played with the paper dragon. In the warm afternoon sun, Daniel had to fight his eyelids 
just to keep them open. Is it, could it be? Or is this all just a dream? <laughs> it's, a, it's a wild dream, you're crazy, Daniel. The next day, with boredom and loneliness weighing him down, he began to fiddle with the old radio. Our town is located in the plains where earthquakes are not particularly common. Although there are 17 fault zones around us, they are all inactive. Okay, what's that got to do with the price of fish? A scrunched up ball of paper rolled over to his feet. Where did this paper ball come from? Just as Daniel went to pick it up, the ball suddenly came to life, and it rolled away. Daniel chased after it. I'd be a little concerned about a paper ball rolling away from me. Okay, not terrible. The paper dragon enjoyed the sound very much. It began to move along with the rhythm, flipping up and down in the air. Soon the two were playing and dancing, just like old friends. The paper dragon traced out a beautiful arc in the air, communicating with Daniel in a unique way. Oh. God. <laughs> My cherished friend, after many long years, we finally meet again. We've met before. Tell me, how has your family been? A great thank you for playing that music for me. You know how I love the beautiful rhythm of that instrument. But we ought to take precautions, as the room is not stable. Do you still remember how the room works? You're welcome to visit any time. The piece of paper then changed back into the shape of a paper dragon and flew into the cardboard box. The box closed shut and a calm silence was restored to the attic. Oh, great. Daniel rushed to find a watercolor pen and marked the box with excitement in his fingertips. E. 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 Getting attacked the paper by paper balls. balls. Swarmed together and pushed Daniel away, subduing him firmly in the corner. He couldn't move. Oh no, paper balls. Wow, it's not like they're fucking paper. <laughs> Suddenly, ominous clouds rose from the box, and a violent lightning flashed through the room. The figure of a giant slowly emerged from the thick clouds, and the entire attic became overwhelmed with its evil aura. The earthquake is growing stronger, now with a magnitude of 7.1! Heaven Almighty, are we doomed? The giant unleashed its power maniacally. The paper dragon struggled against it, with no means of fighting back. Okay, what can I do? At this critical moment, Two paper dragons shined brilliantly. Together, they heroically crashed their bodies into the giant. Daniel thought the giant had been defeated by the paper dragons, but soon he found that things would probably not be so simple. The giant's figure could still be seen in the thick smoke, looking evil and terrible. The attacks of the paper dragons had had no effect, and the giant had only grown stronger. It fought back with a new ferocity. The paper dragons were simply no match for it. With the paper dragons now all but defeated, Daniel spotted a frail figure in the distance. 
It was Penny. It flew gently in front of Daniel and affectionately rubbed its head against his fingers as if this whole crisis had never happened. Daniel felt like Penny was trying to tell him something, but he didn't quite understand what. Penny then left Daniel and soared into the air with a determination in its wings. Suddenly, the other paper dragons seemed to be summoned. They flew through the air, all together in unison, responding to the call without an ounce of hesitation. At that moment, Penny turned into a great red beam and rushed fast towards the giant. The other dragons followed, shining together like a shooting star. At that moment, Daniel seemed to see a real dragon flying. From the impact drowned out everything else in the attic. <laughs> I think the turning of the page turned it all. The out. attic rained down with countless pieces of paper, the leftover scraps of the paper dragons. Daniel wanted to collect all of the pieces. He thought he could still fix them. A few days later, the art festival was held as scheduled. Daniel oh attended no! The show with his penny whistle. Oh no, I know what's coming. I don't want to do this fucking puzzle again. Please, game, don't make me do this. I did it three times already. I don't want to do it in an hour time. Now, oh, thank God it's over. And that's how the story ends. Now, you might be wondering, what happened next? Are there still paper dragons in the world? Well, that's a difficult question to answer. But I believe that they are still protecting us somewhere in this world, just like they promised they would forever into eternity. Loud noises. Is it another first person? <clears throat> D6744, please provide your identification code according to the mission letter. Ah, uh, suck my ass. Four and twenty blackbirds. Uh, tell me, Doc, when was the last time this rag on my head was washed? D6744, according to the seventh edition of the security regulation amendment, you must first provide your identification code. Otherwise, you will be executed. Oh, yeah, I do. Four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. You're a real fan of these formalities. Everything's got to be right by the book with you. Oh, God. Fuck. Ooh. Another first person. Yippee. Mike Donald. Consciousness intrusion expert. Former leader of MTF UP2. Codename Spider. Now, mm -hmm. level D personnel. Number. 6744. D6744. What the hell you want me to do? D6744. Do you know about the witch plan? None. I've heard the <laughs> Yeah, which plan? The plan is under the direct command of O5. Every last detail of the plan is protected by the strictest confidential terms. So what? Okay, D6744. but which plan? What you're about to witness is top secret information of the foundation. Oh, phenomenal. What the hell is going on? A few hours ago, something went wrong with the witch plan experiment. The energy of the human anomaly, SCP-239, is out of control and has begun diffusing outward, disintegrating everything it touches. You guys seriously never cease to amaze me. SCP-239 is now a ticking time bomb. She could go off at any moment. <laughs> I need you to enter the consciousness of SCP-239 to stop this bomb from exploding. 
The neural key is fully charged and ready to enter the target consciousness space. Begin the program. Consciousness begins to link. Start the key to the We don't have much time. Three, fuck, wait, wait, wait. So it's consciousness. There you go. That's the sound of someone entering someone else's consciousness. Oh. Uh, hello there? How do you know? Hmm. Uh, hey, wait! Funny girl. What did you see? A little girl, but she ran away when she saw me. That little girl is SCP-239. What else have you discovered? Oh, fucking... <laughs> It's not a cake, it's a wind me up merry go round to Barbie doll. But the, the. <sighs> Let's not talk about I'm it. Sorry. Help. Help me. The girl's consciousness is severely damaged. That probably explains her total loss of energy control. Then how should we proceed? Touch, mood, anxiety, close pain, loss. Ladybug, time clock, summer, burn, oh God. movie, snake. SCP-239, containment unit, made of glass in it. See so you guys like me. I'm Dr. Okay. Pierce. We are now conducting ability control test number 125 of SCP-239. Okay, let us begin. First. Set voltage strength to 30 kilovolts. Power on. SCP-239. Move the target object to the designated location. Ability control test number 125 has failed. The voltage intensity must be insufficient. I'll need a new test site, along with new equipment that can handle a greater voltage load. Okay, so basically, literally every mad science experiment gone wrong. Gotcha. Please tell me that's not her. Hello there! Oh, it was her. Hold uh, on a second, I'm not going Look, she vanished into particles. Oh well. Oh, tough tits. <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> Can I go home now? When you feel scared, just close your eyes. Imagine something beautiful, and those terrible things will disappear. My name is Violet Tattoo. You can just call me Violet. I will take care of you from now on. No one will hurt you ever again. That's a bullshit fucking lie. It feels a bit too stuffy. This is the house should have very strong floors. Strong enough to support my weight. The Robin shakes his head. Hmm. Stops its hunting. It pulls back and whispers. There should be beautiful spotted curtains to block out the sun. I hate that child sun. laughing. It is so fucking creepy. Robin shakes its head again. And it's such a stock uh, sound too. The giraffes speak from way up high. The house should oh, have a so high fucking roof. adorable. I love giraffes. The place should hang from the ceiling. The robin flaps its wings and flies uh, uh, away. Uh, uh.
blackmail her. Fuck me, she's just a little girl. I feel for it. She's not even real. Jesus Christ, this is inhumane. Even for SCP standards, like, that's just... It's like, it, it almost makes you want to hate the SCP Foundation and make them sort of, like... It, make, it makes you think, right, that the SCP Foundation, albeit that they're trying to do good, that they've lost their humanity, their ethicalities, right? That's what it makes you feel like when shit like this happens. They get a little girl to make a, quote, great big tree for a bird and... She can't stop. She can't stop building it. You know, you tell her to make a great big tree, she starts making a great big tree, and then it goes out of, you know, proportions when she was telling you the bird's home isn't a great big tree. Sammy. Sammy. Hi, hello. It's okay. I just want to talk. No. Stay away. What happened? It, it's not your fault. <laughs> Okay. B6744. Nicely done. Uh, hold on. The outflow of energy of SCP-239 has subsided and is now beginning to dissipate. We have regained control. But just hold on. Again, a job well done. The synapse is now ready to be disconnected. Can you just hold the fuck on and listen for a damn change? What's the matter? The problem hasn't yet been solved. She's still lost deep in her mental anguish. That's not our concern. The crisis has been averted. Innumerable lives have been saved. Your mission is complete. My mission's not complete until she is stable. Compassion in times of desperation leads only to the destruction of yourself. Three minutes. You owe me that much. For all this you owe me. I can enter her subconscious and fix this. Three minutes. Very well. I'll disconnect the synapse in three minutes. If you're not back, then so be it. I will show no compassion. Maternal dystocia, profuse bleeding, send to operating room now. It's literally every Gmod scary map ever made. I'm sorry, was that supposed to be scary? <laughs> Devs? Rate, <laughs> come on, like Devs, come on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You, you've done you've done better than that in terms of jump scares. You've done heaps better than that. <laughs> SCP-239! 
SCP-239. 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 That's an order. SCP-239. That's an order. SCP-239. She sounds familiar. Who is I no. SCP-239. Do as I say. I Come on. Do I it. Can't. Come on. Do it. SCP-239! No! SCP-239! No! SCP-239! No, no, no! Don't blame yourself. None of this is your fault. Maybe you weren't meant for this world. Ah. Oh, my head. Take a deep breath. Just some minor side effects from the forced disconnection. She's not coming back. What? In the end, she chose to shut off her subconscious. She'll sleep forever, like a plant. Which plant? Again, I've been asking the same question. <laughs> Which fucking plant? <laughs> Turning eight years old. God, an eight-year-old girl being turned to torch like this. Fuck, when I handed this task to you, I was frankly rather worried about whether or not you would be able to complete it. It seems you are ready. What do you mean? Carl, someone wants to talk to you. <laughs> Unknown contact. 05. Hello, Carl. <laughs> it's 05. I bet you it's 05. What is your name? Doesn't matter who I am. What matters is... Who are you? Carl. It's just a name, a symbol. I am the one who will guide you to the answers. What should I do? First, you will need to complete some warm-up exercises. And I didn't catch it. Anyway guys, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me play SCP Secret Files. Again, it has been a hot minute and I did say I would be back and I do like this game. It's a nice little story-based game. Without a doubt, I will be coming back to finish this game. It's just one of those few games that I want to do a complete gameplay of and sort of just finish because, you know, it's not very, it's not every day that we get a fully fledged first person 3D environment SCP So, game. anyway guys, thank you all so much for watching once again. I hope you enjoyed. I'll talk to you in the next video. See you guys.